Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Now, this is like the third time I've started this video, <laughs> okay? I am recording this the first week of May 2022. I'm actually in Seattle, Washington area, and I am here on the West Coast because I am having the opportunity for a couple of weeks to spend time solo to really work on my own, do my own self work. That is extraordinarily important. Not everybody has this opportunity to actually go away from your home and your actual human responsibilities to, to do this kind of, of deeper soul work and I'm blessed to be able to have it and have the support to do that. I, if you are watching my Instagram, Bridget Inspired on Instagram, you'll see all my pictures and my posts. I've been spending a lot of time in nature and walking outside and a lot of time journaling and, and really um, doing meditations and yoga and just feeling into this process for me, this journey and trying to allow things to come forward, to shift, to move, to be more revealed and vulnerable with myself, for myself. And one of the things that I've identified um, over and over and over again is fear. There's a lot of fear on this healing journey in general, just on this life path in general. For many of us, you're all feeling that in some way, shape or form, or you're trying hard not to feel that. So the channeling session today is gonna to be up for grabs as far as spiritual support because I've been doing a lot of work with Divine Feminine. And I've also been getting some nudges from the life purpose work that I do here on Above Life Channel and, and remembering how it started. So there's a little bit of Prince vibes that I've been connected into the last week or so, and also energies of divine feminine like Marilyn Monroe and Judy Garland and stuff. So in fact, that's who we'll talk to is Judy. We'll bring her forward. Judy, Judy, my cutie, come on forward, Judy Garland. Now you guys might be like, Bridget, how is this helping you on your personal healing journey? Well, it's helping a lot because these afterlife spirits that we talk, talk to about and with on Above Life Channel, they have a sense of self awareness now from the afterlife because they're pure spirit perspective looking back upon life. So they can give us insight that we cannot obtain until after we're out of the body. And then it's kind of not valid. It's like having a coupon you can't use anymore because it's not valid, it's expired. So let's get this information, this intel while we can and why, while it's gonna be helpful and useful to us. Judy is such a wonderful guest. Oh my gosh, darling, I have not seen you forever. It has been a long time. It has been a long time. In fact, you brought me a really wonderful client, let me just say, and I'm sure he's watching. And I hope you're doing well. And I haven't heard from you for a bit. And I just assume that you are doing the work and you are showing up for your life the best you can and you are a fun person. And I just wanna shout out to you because you're the reason why I um, really love talking to her. So, okay. So, Judy. Um, Judy has had her struggles in life. She had a lot of struggles. And as a mother, the feeling of not being enough or like, how do I say this? She is very human in her perspectives. And I respect and appreciate that. I mean, what good is psychic information? What good is it if somebody's channeling celebrities and they're not giving you actual real human information that's gonna help you now, right here, now? Exactly, she says exactly. She's drinking ginger ale, I'm gonna say that. Oh my gosh, and then she literally says all of us alcoholics do that. I'm like, what? It's like in a glass, little glass bottle, uh, little glass container with some rocks, it's on the rocks, and it's like, uh, it looks like, it's, it does look like ginger ale, but it's just like all of us alcoholics, do. we do that. Um, She said, it's not quite the same, but it gives you the sensation. Oh, interesting. Can you talk about sensation, sensory senses? That's interesting because 
I am finding, specifically with this topic of fear, that um, there's so much fear. Like I feel so much in resistance coming up as fear and also recognizing the sensory sensation, the sensations of how that feels in my body and where it is and how my mind is kind of sparking into that and almost like kind of gaslighting. It's almost a little bit. I mean, I know that term is very serious, but it's kind of like triggering. That's a better word, maybe. Um, the fear is being triggered by memories in my mind that I can go to and pull out that affirm the reason why the fear is valid. It's like making valid the fear. And the sensations that I have are to then want to soothe that, calm it down, cool off the fear. So if fear is heat or hotness, then I wanna cool it and soothe it. You know, it's like a burn kinda. Which is actually interesting, because temperature-wise, fear feels cold to me. That's interesting. Fascinating, actually. What, oh, fear, what, oh, temperature, oh, interesting. Cold, it feels cool to me like ice. Like it, it freezes things up so that you can't move, it's freeze like the trauma response of freeze. That's what fear is for me. And you just jingling that little glass with the ice cubes in it of ginger ale and saying, it's because I'm this, suggests that you've developed an unhealthy healthy pattern and patterns, as we all have, in life that you were used to soothe what? The fear of the pain. She says, it's, bo it's both, Bridget. She shows me an infinity sign, an e never ending loop of pain and fear and pain and fear and pain and fear. And she says, the fear causes you pain, but more than that, she says more than that, it causes you the need to soothe it, to stop it. To and, and she's not using the word numbing. I know a lot of people use the word numbing the pain, but she's using the word to soothe the pain, to find a way to live with it inside of it. And what happens, she says, is the greatest fear, she says, in that process of trying to soothe the pain, the greatest fear is to feel it. Like you don't want to feel it. So the pain is the problem. The pain is the what you're trying to avoid. And the fear of feeling it is what is controlling you. The fear of feeling your own pain is what controls you, she says. It's controlling. It's manipulative. It's conniving. It's ruthless. The fear of feeling the pain is what controls you. She said that's addiction. The fear of feeling pain is, a, is why addictions happen, she says. And there's good ones. There are good things you can do to soothe your pain. Go for a walk, go for a run, exercise, be one of those people. Overly focus, hyper focus on something completely different to use like what I would say, you guys, is distraction to actually work in your favor. Use the cycles and the rhythms, like the patterns that your brain uses that are unhealthy habits that the same cycle pattern, natural organic rhythm to create a, a, to create the cycle, use that to create a, a, a better opportunity or option, like self-improvement stuff, you know, like focus on going to college then or schooling or taking a class or starting a different um, um, exercise program or a different eating thing or something like that. It's like something to work on does that create soothing though? Something to work on? Is that is that even valid? Because that's like feels like old school spirituality. Judy, you gotta bust me on this. Come on. Is that old school spirituality? She says, she says, I'm drinking ginger ale and I'm a spirit. What do you think? It's not the same, she says. It's not the same. Everyone's pain is different. Your pain threshold is different. She says, you know when you go to the hospital and they show you the faces, the smiley faces, into the sad faces, into the, like what level is your pain and they show you the emojis? Like I'm gonna say emojis. She says she, they show you pictures. There's so many ways you can show your pain. But we are still, we are still guided to repress it. So when someone asks you to share your pain or to suggest to you that you should, just a minute, hey, 
Hey, hey, hey. I'm dog, I'm dog sitting. Yeah. That would be a, um, his name is Tucker. Yeah, he's a stinker. He probably heard somebody going out. Oh, he's just trying to protect me, I think. Yeah, heard somebody going down the stairwell. Hey, Tucker, Tucker, Tuck, Tuck. Come in. Oh, thank you for keeping me safe. Thank you so much. I'm gonna give him a little pet. Doing it naturally, organically, what is needed. He's not afraid. That wasn't fear-based, I don't think, but he's just being helpful, I think. He's trying to help. So the pain part, talk to me more about this. Okay, so the organic nature of human is humans is to avoid pain. Stop, please. Can you stop, please? Hey. Can you stop? Please stop. The natural, natural, organic, that org we avoid pain and the pain tolerance or the pain thresholds. And we're asked to, when we're actually asked how we feel, how, how do you feel? And here's the scale. She says, um, it's a bit like a deer in the headlights. Do you really want to know? She says, do you really want to know? Because I don't think you could handle that. Because my pain is different than your pain as far as this threshold of how much we can handle or manage. And it's not about who can handle more. It's about the type of life experience you're having that and how it affects you personally is yours. And she says, the ability to, um, to be able to soothe the, the intensity of the pain, it, it is natural. It is natural to do that. And so I'm like trying to find to figure out healthy ways to do that. And she's saying, good luck. No, seriously, you need to tell me this because you're an afterlife spirit. You have to have some wisdom on how to ease this pain piece. She says pain is productive. It is productive because it gives you the power to connect with your heart. And without it, you would not break open. And you need to be open in order to receive the love that you need, which is why you have the pain in the first place, she says. The pain is caused by feeling unloved. Everything that you're going through and you're experiencing is related to love. If you have it or if you don't have it, how you perceive it to be, it's connected to all of the things of worthiness and accomplishment and goal setting and my mother didn't love me or my dad didn't recognize me or um, someone bullied me or treated me badly. It's all about the love and your, your capacity to receive the love has to be, you have to be broken open. You have to be open. And the way to open the heart is through the pain. You don't soften your heart to love. Oh, perhaps over time, years, decades, lifetimes maybe. But if you want to get to it, you must be present and recognize that there's pain and identify that your personal pain is expressed in ways that are different than my pain. And yet, there should not be judgment, but there will be, there is, because it's natural. There are critics everywhere, including inside your mind and yourself, that do hold you back through that state of fear that you acknowledged. Fear does cause pain, yes. And it does it on purpose in a way to help you grow or to help you numb. Those are your choices. So when you have fear that creates pain, pain present is an opportunity to grow or to numb. You get a choice. It's a fork in the road, she says. It's a fork in the road. Pain is a fork in the road. And you have time. She says, you have time. You're given time. You can pause, kind of feel your way around in there. Try to identify which of those little smiley face things works for you or, or expresses the level or degree of, of your feeling or the intensity of it in order to be able to soothe it but the soothing will happen naturally over time as you allow the pain to grow you, to grow you, to open you up, to acknowledge that pain isn't necessarily bad, even though it just feels extraordinarily uncomfortable. It feels bad, but it doesn't mean it is bad. It is growing you if you choose it as an opportunity to grow you. While you are soothing the pain, you could be soothing that with a tremendous amount of compassion for yourself, dignity, the way you carry yourself through that time, allowing yourself the rest, the days in bed, if that is what is needed. 
the forgiveness if you did drink and you are an alcoholic and you drank the night before, the forgiveness not just because your body feels like complete crap, but because you know you just lost years, years of sobriety. The power to be able to forgive yourself, that's painful. That's painful. And what comes through is the love that soothes you is the love inside you. And that is, I know, I don't want to get too churchy, she says, or religious. It's God. What some would say God is, or universe, or the Divine Mother, or whatever that is for you, she says. Inside that part of yourself that rises up when you are so low that holds you in forgiveness and compassion that is the part of you that is fiercely loving and completely loyal and through the fear and the pain and the cycle of the growth and the breaking open that expands you to be in more love with yourself, for yourself, for you. She says, I had decades of hardship. Yeah, I have hard times, hard things, struggling, yes. Trying to be what the world wanted me to be and what they expected was extraordinarily complicated and difficult. But it's not unlike your path and what you are dealing with in yourself. Did she smoke? Because she sounds rough. Her throat sounds rough. And she says, the soothing comes from facing the pain and loving yourself, being kind to yourself, being compassionate and gentle, caring about your body, filling it with a ton of water so you're not dehydrated. Providing yourself the opportunity for others to support you. If an assistant comes in and offers you some vitamin C and you take that and it helps your body, great. If someone sends you flowers and, and it's the fifth bouquet you've received in the day because you have a, a performance at night or it's your birthday or whatever it might be, receive it as though it's the first and only you've ever received ever and the only time you've ever seen a flower. Like really take that in. That's precious. That's soothing. That's the kind of connection that you can gain when you really are showing up then for yourself. She says, that's the power of the pain. It's the, it, it gives you the ability to show up for yourself. and to discover new ways of being in the world, who you are. At every day of your life, every point in your life, there's a new opportunity. To be with this life in a new way. To be a unique version of yourself today. There's not an answer here. But to know that pain is not bad is extraordinarily important. It is natural. And even if you can trace it back, she says, and identify a behavior or something you did to cause that, to create that scenario that is giving you an energy of just pure pain right now, know that it is because there is so much fear and so much energy and resistance around the actual healing that the pain is bringing through for you, the gift of the opportunity for healing, that's the point of it all. Not a bad choice that you made or a poor behavior pattern or an old school pattern that's resurfacing. It's not because you're bad. You might feel bad, but you are not bad. And the feeling of pain itself you can get lost in it and that is not a bad thing she's like saying it's not a bad thing there is wisdom inside the pain whether it's a physical body pain whether it's a mental anguish whether it's about expectations and acceptance and embracing 
who you are now and the opportunities that you look back that you maybe screwed up or messed up because you were soothing the pain. You were trying to prevent more pain from coming when you didn't address the pain in the first place. It's not because you're dumb or because you're, an, you're completely an idiot when it comes to yourself. It's because there's so much fear around being and embracing ourselves in each of the new iterations that we are becoming and as our lives are unfolding as unique individuals that we are. If we could just celebrate that, wrap our arms around that and be in love all the time inside of ourselves, we would feel much better, even ecstatic or euphoric. And then at some point the pain will come again, but it's not to create hurt or because you did something wrong it's because you're it's a natural part of human expression to step outside and to try and test the waters and then to come back in and try to figure out what that means now through these new experiences you're having and these new thoughts that are coming up that are connected to old belief systems from other people that you got that you weren't good enough or that you had to behave in a certain way in order to get the love or perform in a certain way in order to get the love in that over and over and over again, the demands upon you externally in order to keep up that old way of being, that has to change, there has to be change. And she said, and it's fearful, it's scary, it's scary. It's scary. And that's okay, it's okay to be afraid and it's okay to feel pain. She said, that's how you're gonna know yourself, that's how you will know yourself. So I'm gonna have coffee. I also do have tea, just to be clear. Not too much caffeine. <laughs> I'm feeling emotional connecting to her right now. There's just so much love and support inside of ourselves. We have it. She was an extraordinary performer. She was so talented, singing and acting and dancing. I mean, she did it all. And she died alone. Still trying to be the Judy Garland. Forced, as Frances Gum, forced to grow up fast and perform. We, you and I, we perform too. That's the only way she knew love. Completely not understanding relationships except for what people can get from you. And then she's sharing with me a little bit about escape or escapism, that addiction or soothing patterns that aren't so healthy. It could be food, it could be um, just watching TV instead of going for a walk. It could be simple things like just however you escape of social media, for example, that kind of thing. It doesn't have to be something massive like an addiction, but, but it can be. But she's saying es the escapist piece, the escapism piece, she said, is something that has long, long existed because of the mind. It's a fantasy. It's not just a simple distraction, she says. It's a fantasy. The fact that you could avoid pain is a fantasy. It's not real. It's not real at all. You cannot avoid pain. You can only put off or procrastinate it. So the escape, she says, being a performer, entertaining others, for a while there on stage, I can be in a place of bliss where it feels transcendent, so much love from the audience pouring into me. And she says, and yet I walk off the stage and I can't even remember what happened or how it felt, or it's momentary, it's fleeting. The joy that I can receive is fleeting. Even though people in the audience may receive an incredible healing energy, just from the channeling and the, the expression of the feeling and sharing myself, my talents, Yet, we all do that in relationship. We all do that with others. We all do that in the world. How are you performing? How are you using 
in addition to you guys get out your journals come on performing how are you performing the escapist piece is natural she says but it is a fantasy that you can avoid pain through that the joy is temporary and she says the pain only lingers because it is attached to the fear of having more and there's this falsehood she says that pain is like a shield so that if you hold some then when others come other pain comes in it'll be deflected or bounced off it she said that is not true it just adds on and then pretty soon it's so compressing that it's you can barely breathe it suffocates the heart it, it squeezes out all the love and then you're struggling for any little breath of air like love to receive any little bits of feeling good and then you trick yourself into believing that you can be soothed by some kind of an escape your vice of choice whatever that is chocolate food drugs responsibility living through others if you're a mother and you have children you focus on your children instead of yourself and that's escapism as well oh my motherhood she says yes i was horrible i was a horrible mother you can ask my children they would tell you i'm a hor i was a horrible mother she's a horrible why do you say that judy she says i loved my children i loved them so much i loved them so much but I was a horrible mother. One, because I was an addict. Two, because I should have never had children in the first place. I wasn't equipped to be responsible for another human being. But I tried. And I certainly loved them in my way. And they loved me back in as it would be expected. So I suppose as a mother and with children, I performed and they did too. Maybe that's what you all are doing, is performing. What if we could be more authentic, Judy? What would that look like? How would that be? That's what you're trying to do, she says. That's what everyone is trying to do. That is actually the goal. That is actually the way to wholeness and fulfillment. What do you choose when you're in pain? What do you choose? To be expanded or to numb? You get to choose. Whoa. Okay, let's, can we all just take a breath? Take a nice breath in. And an exhale out. Very heart focused today. Um, I'm actually wearing green. I'm just realizing the fact that I'm wearing green. It's heart based, heart chakra energy, and healing energy. So Archangel Raphael, and we're going to bring in Archangel Raphael's energy to help soothe and comfort you as you are as you are going through whatever you are going through at this point in time. There's a lot of nuggets of wisdom in here, a lot of gems of information coming through this conversation with Judy. Probably because I'm ex I've expressed to you that I'm on this. I'm doing my I'm doing my work on this healing journey. <clears throat> right now I'm willing to go there into those places of fear and pain and it's not easy it's not easy so we bring in Archangel Raphael and wrap you with a gorgeous energy a halo of green light like the energy of adventuring the stone I'm also called to share um, the blue lace agate, which is an angelic stone, bringing in angelic energy. It feels really right right now for us as we're connecting today. So gifting that to you as we wrap up this channeling session with Judy Garland in the afterlife here on Above Life Channel. I'm Bridget. I'm a psychic medium, but I'm also an intuitive life coach, and I do help people through this process for themselves as well. You can go out and check the details below in the description here on this video. Also follow me on Instagram, Bridget Inspired, and you can see all the videos are, and the reels and the pictures that I'm posting here uh, about my trip here out to the West Coast and the experience that I'm moving through. 
I hope it can inspire your spirit and fill you with hope and encourage you to live your life. It's yours. It's yours. And you get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.